Today we're looking at ticket number 12539 and it's a Nintendo Switch OLED edition. Supposedly the actual charging port itself is a little bit mangled, but to be honest with you, I can't see anything wrong with that port. I'm gonna take a look under the scope. Has no power and doesn't take a charge, supposedly. All right, so the pins on the back, how are they looking? To be honest, pretty, uh, pretty good. Looking pretty solid, if I do say so myself, which is, uh, which is good news. We have the indestructible fuse as well. So I'll just go and check that. Right, so we have continuity through the fuse, so the fuse is all good. Let's check the actual port. Okay, looking in the port, look at that. No crossed pins or anything. The port's not loose at all. None of them are coming up and away from the plastic from what I can tell. I've tested with the ammeter and I get nothing. Is that That's the BQ charging I see. So it's a little bit different on the OLED versions of the Nintendo Switch. We've got the charging port here. Usually the BQ charging I see is here, but on this board it's over to the left. Now I don't know what's happened here. Oh, okay. That's just a little bit of um, stickiness on the thermal pad that sits on top of it. You have that there, and then if we go over to the left even further, we've got a Max IC, and the board layout is completely different to that of the Nintendo Switch. Here we've got the LCD ribbon connector. This is the Realtek IC here, so responsible for sound. And if we turn the board over, M92T36 is here. This is usually uh, in kind of reference to a standard board. This is usually where P13 is, and P13 subsequently is all the way over here, down here. So I'm gonna check for some shorts, because again, the port itself looks okay. So starting with M92T36, is exactly the same chip as the one on the original Nintendo Switch. Meet it in continuity mode. Do we get any weird beep -de beeps? So far, so good. That's ground. That all seems to be okay. Okay, everything around the M92 T36 IC seems to be all right. I'm just double checking. Yeah, no issues at all around there. <laughs> Whilst I'm here, I'll inspect um, B13. Again, no problems. Seems to be all good. And if we just go ahead and check BQ. No shorts around BQ either. I've had it a couple of times where even though M92 T36 isn't showing any issues, you can have problems with the IC. It could blow internally. That's actually relatively common. I'm gonna check this again in the ammeter because I was getting nothing before. And yeah, I'm still getting nothing on the ammeter at all. Let me try both sides. Because like I said, I don't I don't think it's the actual port. The port feels extremely secure. It looks okay inside. Yeah, look, both sides, nothing. I might go for a blind swap of M92T36. Customer actually stated they weren't using an original Nintendo Switch charger. So I wonder if that has just blown M92 out of the water. I'll change that first. And then worst case scenario, I'll just change out the port. But I think it's gonna be okay. The soldering technique for this should be exactly the same as any other switch that I've worked on previously. So we're gonna come in with the hot air, slowly circulate it and make the board a little bit warmer just to make it easier to get the IC off. I don't want to add flux just yet. And the pin one is bottom left. So you see that circle there, which is different to the um, original switches. So we just take that off. Is there a marking on the board to show where pin one goes? I don't think there is. So we come back in now. Place it on just in place like that. Give it a little wiggle, it's definitely secure. Coming with our flux. And flow the chip into place. It looks pretty much in place, so I don't think we'll see much of a pop, but you never know. Looking all good, come off the heat. Might need to move it over a tad. Just a tiny weeny bit. There we go. And I'm gonna push down on that chip. Just to make sure we're all good and connected. And take the hot air off. Let it cool. Nice, come in with some more flux just around the edges. And our soldering iron with a tiny bit of leaded solder on the end. And just make sure it's all soldered. Nice. Good clean with some isopropyl alcohol. Cotton swab. And hopefully we should be all good. Like I said, if the if the customer has put in an incorrect 
charger and giving this too much voltage, the port itself is going to be fine. It would just be a case that it's blown the chip, so we don't actually need to change the port. If I still get the same issue when I go to plug in the ammeter, I'm going to change the port. Chances that it might have blown this M92 T36 chip, uh, it's very likely, but we'll see. There we go. Good that side. Good that side. Good that side. And good that side. Perfect. Whilst we're here and I've got the multimeter, I am just going to check and see if we've developed any shorts because I've had a few bad M92s from the packet recently. But I think we're okay. Yeah, we're okay. All right, let's let's uh, let's give it a test. Okay, firstly, trying this without the chassis or anything along those lines. Just want to see if we get anything on the ammeter. Here we go. There we go, just like that. It says 15 volts. We're not drawing any outs, but that's because we don't have the battery in. Uh, and I'll try the other side as well. There we go, and it pops up. Exactly the same, no amp draw. Should be okay though, to be honest. On a normal Nintendo Switch, what usually happens on I don't know if it's this one or the previous amp meter that I have. It goes up to around about 30 milliamps, then drops down, uh, even when there's no battery connected, but this isn't doing it, but it's an OLED, so I don't know, could be the slightest uh, of change that will make a difference. I'll be back with you in a second. I'm just gonna reassemble and make sure that this definitely works. And here we have the OLED switch. You can see that it's still taking a healthy charge, uh, about 600 milliamps, and if we go and turn it on, boom, it's working absolutely perfectly. All other features, for example, working in docking station, all seem to be A-OK. -okay. The Joy-Con rails work. It's all good to go. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.